Aldis Tony returns and plays well as Arkansas defeats the LSU Tigers for the third time in a row this season to advance uh, to the semifinals in the SEC tournament to face Texas A&M. This is Arkansas Basketball Recap. I'm Daniel Price. That's Jacob Price. Let's break it down. Huge win. Hard to beat a team three times in a season in the in a conference team, a conference foe, no matter who they are. Really hard to beat a team that is going to the tournament three times in a season. It's just hard to do, man. It's just hard to do. And this was the easiest game that Arkansas had against LSU, I think. Uh, you know, the first half was a, a little shaky, but this was the largest margin of victory, the most secure the game felt coming down the stretch, I think, that they've had against LSU, period. And, uh, man alive, I was glad that Tony uh, was not more hurt than he was because I do think, especially in the first half, he was what kept us in that game. He kept us, he kept it close the first half uh, and played well through the entire game. Yeah, there was no doubt about that. I mean, we would have... I think almost not even, a, I mean, not, there's no question about it. We would have objectively been down by 12 instead of five or whatever, because we didn't make a field goal for like 12 minutes or something like that. And all we had was like five free throws from him, not to mention, you know, his steals. I mean, well, he had 11 of the first 20 points. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that, that obviously the first five minutes started out fun. <laughs> In the last 15 minutes of that, uh, first half were brutal for, for everybody. Yeah. I mean, part of it was it's a well, part of it's a defense, dude. Like, you're talking about some two teams that are getting after it defensively, yeah. And it was good defense, but and and both teams were a little bit cold. It was like a mixture. I mean, it's the perfect mixture for a really ugly couple of minutes, which is both teams were playing really hard defense, especially in the paint. There was nothing happening close to the basket, and then. It was making both teams were making kind of some bad decisions on taking bad shots, turning the ball over, and then they also weren't hitting any of the shots that they did get that were decent looks. So yeah, all did, that it, together, it, it seemed like both teams. It was like I know, especially with Arkansas. Uh, like if Arkansas picked up, if we picked up our dribble, you had two guys on you immediately. Yeah, I mean, just don't, do I mean, it, it, just it, don't do it, man. Like I mean, I know it's hard, hard to, to say, but. That the defense was very swarmy. It was it was, it was a pestering defense, and the inter the inside defense up for both teams was just really good. I mean, it was it was tough down there. I mean, dude, Tony finishes with twenty two points, ten rebounds, two assists. Um, yeah, I th- I thought one turnover. Uh, so uh, as good, and we'll get into likes. But as good as likes played. Uh. Uh, Tony is the player of the game for me. For one, like coming back, he's he obviously wasn't 100. Had to leave and get his ankle wrapped up. Not 100. percent Keeping us in it. Uh, obviously, he had all those re- that you know he has led, led him scoring and he had 10 rebounds, so that, that helps. But I think what it was is that likes played great. I love to see it coming down the stretch. We're gonna I need some of that. But Tony played almost perfect basketball. Like likes played really well and did a couple of likes kind of things that were really dumb. I don't know if Tony made it. I mean, he had one turnover. So apparently he made one mistake the whole game. That's the only mistake I could possibly think of that he made. I thought he played great defense. I mean, well, Tony, and Tony played perfect. Not to take anything away from likes. I'm, I mean, I'm ecstatic about his game. I'm, I'm glad he had a good game. I hope he can get some confidence from that. Same thing with like what happened to Amude a few games ago where he got his confidence and he's been shooting great ever since from the three-point line. Um, he's kind of our go-to three-point valve i mean if he's if he's open you know he's been making uh, mm-hmm. a high percentage and i hope that can happen for likes maybe he can get some confidence from this um but that being said when likes the good part of likes his game tonight i mean he played okay for the majority i mean he had to you know stay note in the first half and he didn't do great but it was he held you know he didn't get out of control or anything didn't turn the ball over a lot but at the end there, he more or less just closed it out and kept them from coming back. But we already Mm -hmm. had a 10 point lead. Well, And and he was, he was, he just made it where they couldn't get back in it. He went on two runs by himself. So he went on a six point run at the end of the half. So we went into the half up. Uh, Now it was all at the free throw line, but you still got to make them. And, you know, he was seven and eight from the free throw line. Part of that was Will Wade. I mean, that was, Mm -hmm. that's as dumb a technical foul as I've ever seen a coach get 
especially mm -hmm. because I'm actually still not a hundred percent sure. Sometimes, you know, something egregious happens, the refs absolutely miss it. And you see a coach losing his mind and you're like, I kind of get it. But that one, if, if you're going to get a tech, get it with five minutes left. So you can at least try to, you know, sometimes they try to be like, well, it was going to pump their team up. And I, sometimes that doesn't work. And I don't even know if it ever works, but at least there's that uh, logic where you're like, he's fired up. He's going to bat for his guys. He's getting on the rest. This is going to fire them up and make them play. It doesn't work with 20 I seconds did, left. He didn't mean to get it. And that was, I don't think it was anything. I don't think it was the particular thing. Um, that he said i think that was a we already we already warned you and then and that was an accumulative technical like if he had been like mm -hmm. chilling out the whole game and then whatever that was happened that's probably nothing but there he was freaking out earlier and he had got a bench warning and that was just up oh, that you did you did it one more time now now here's your technical uh so I don't, I don't definitely don't think that was a get my guys pumped up kind of thing going you know as a, you're going down the stretch in the first half but still, you know, likes was great. Uh, I I like likes at the free throw line. That's for sure. I mean, he's he's very good at the free throw line. And, you know, he was five and nine from the floor, which is good. I mean, I mean the the four shots he missed were all threes. Mm -hmm. You know, I think so. Uh, and he you know likes can finish when he gets in. You know, he's got a, he he had one shot in the first half where he took it into the lane, or maybe it was the second half. I can't remember. It was a pretty bad decision because Note was on the on the corner at the three point line and he could have wide open and he could have kicked it to him. Instead, he tried to put the ball up against three of those LSU guys yeah, and yeah. just got it swatted. Well, that's the thing about likes. If like, I don't mind likes going right at a big guy. That's fine. Uh, but I don't like likes going into three big guys. Like you're, you cannot can be able to do that. Likes is shifty enough and moves his body enough and puts that ball up high enough that, you know, as a guy who guards a lot of uh, interior uh, you know, I, I defend the paint my whole life. I've done that. Yeah. There's guys that, you know, when they get ahead of steam and they're smaller and they can get in there and they can make some stuff happen. But if you close in three guys on them, that ain't going to work. And so he's just got to read that a little bit better. I don't, I don't, you know, I understand that he's, he's like, Hey, it's a good idea to penetrate the defense to make it move. And I agree, but you can't, you can't get in the air before you know what you're going to do. And once you see that I many bodies down there, you need to, uh, not not get in the air at all. Well, LSU is a really hard team to score inside. I mean, even Note was really struggling on those drives to try to actually mm -hmm. even get the ball off. Like, well, that's I, mean, why, I think that's why you saw him pick it, a couple of times. He picked it up. That's why he started going super fast to the rim. Like they, they'd outlet. He didn't did none of this like shake and bake going to the rim. It was just go like in transit. Like he was treating everything like transition. Well, and I, that's why I think about with likes too. Likes is buckets that he scored was when the defense wasn't set. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't like likes driving to score on a team like LSU when they're already in their half court set, because there's just such a difference between those big, long athletes being set and you're coming at them versus when you're on the rebound and they're pushing it when their feet are moving backwards, when you've got them backing up, go for it. Like that's yeah. when you likes is going to be able to use his speed to get that ball up there. But when they're standing still and you're coming at them, I mean, you're just, he's just too small. Like they're, they're going to be able to, stay set yeah. and then just wait till he puts it up and squat swat it so speaking, but speaking um, of things you don't do against likes is when you got the lead, when you got the the lead cut down to i think it was nine or ten at that point they cut it down and they and that was you had the ball and they have like a six can't ten guy trying to go full blast and tries to bust a spin move 25 feet from the basket on chris likes dude I could have told you like that not to do that because that ball is going the other direction. The second you, he just goes right underneath you and takes that ball away. Uh, yeah. I, I you know for as undersized as likes is, I think that the, uh, the, the difference is, is very noticeable on how he's committed on the defensive end. Cause he has to play really hard on the defensive end to try to make up for his lack of size. And I, and I think you can see it. Mm -hmm. You know, he's still, you know, things are going to happen sometimes, you know, if you get in a mismatch or whatever. And, he, you know, obviously him jumping out of a guy is not as effective as a six, six Tony doing it. There's nothing you can do about that, but the effort is absolutely there. Yeah. Yeah. And when he commits to that, like when he tries to help or double team, he has to, that's when he gets a lot of those where he grabs the ball. Cause he knows he's got, once he's committed, he can't get 
that recovery to the man in the corner who he left. And that's why he, he doesn't, but he's gotten a couple of those where he gets mm-hmm. down there in the paint where he's helping and he'll just run in there and grab the ball from the guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has better leverage at that point. If the guy's got the ball, if a freaking six, eight guys got the ball down, you know, at his waist, <laughs> he's grabbing it with his shoulders and chest. Whereas you're trying to hold it with your forearms. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he's actually got an, that's the only place he has an advantage is leverage when the ball's down low. Yeah. Uh, but he gets a, he gets a couple of those. But let's so. talk about the real difference in the game besides likes playing. Uh, I think his maybe his best game of the year, if not maybe his second best game of the year. So it's up there. Uh, mm-hmm. Tony playing maybe his best game of the year too. Uh, that was I mean I don't know how you play any better than Tony played. Uh, Crap my pants when 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 he slipped on the floor and walked off the court. I know, uh, and I was surprised that, that I was actually surprised that must ever put him back in. Uh, just I, I was kind of thinking like you know what we're we got we I think we were up by twelve at that point. You know, and I was, I was like, man, you might, you're going to maybe see if we could just do this without him and, uh, you know, make sure that that you don't risk that, but no, nope, he taped it up and went back in. Um, besides those, besides those two guys playing great, uh, Jalen Williams played good. Uh, you know, it wasn't his best game, but you know, he had six points, 11 rebounds, four blocks, two assists. Did you he, think, he was fine. Did, could you tell, like, he was one of the things, especially in the first half. And I don't know if what, what they were doing or if he was just if it was just he was not focused or something. He was catching the ball. I mean, I and I know like we want him catching the ball high sometimes to be a facilitator, but he was never catching the ball in the paint. He like we weren't he wasn't mm-hmm. posting up and we weren't throwing it to him on the high post or the paint. Well, they, tr- the, they, tried, the they tried a couple of times and it resulted in turnovers because just LSU was tough in the interior. Yeah, because I mean, he was out. He was in a bad position, and he mm-hmm. took. A, he actually took a lot. The reason he didn't make a lot of points in the first half is the ones he tried to make were really weird, difficult mm-hmm. shots. You know what I mean? Yeah. From weird angles and and ha- coming off not not his game where he was like having to drive. And, and I mean, I know he can. Like he has proven that he is capable of that. But to me, it's still one of those things. Like especially, I mean, if you're up by twelve. Sure, Jalen Williams, like that's play in the second half. Take it from the three point line all the way and then reverse layup it in. You're you're a big man that's capable of that. While that while he is good at that, it's not the shot you're looking for is Jalen Williams dribble driving from the three point line if you're struggling to score. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's what happened a couple of times in the first half is he was catching the ball like outside the three point line or maybe just one step inside and then being forced to try to drive on with multiple defenders in the paint I and think LSU uh, is, I think LSU is a really tough team to get a post offense going. Um, yeah. Nobody scored a lot in the paint. No, not know? posting up. You, 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 some guys scored when they drove in, but I, I think or, they're a tough team or to post on, up. on rebounds. Like you, most of the points that we had in the paint came from, uh, offensive rebounds yeah. or you know like maybe the ball like there's a couple of those unfortunate like where Jalen gets in there and guys doubling he's almost covered up and it's almost a turnover and then you manage to flip it to somebody who's under there yeah. but there was not a lot of here's the ball I'm going to make a move in the paint those were getting swatted well, you could or... tell you could tell that's the case because I mean Jalen has six points but uh what's very rare for him is Jalen didn't shoot any free throws and that just tells you that like he wasn't getting the ball deep uh because he wasn't he wasn't post up down there like to shoot no yeah. for Jalen to shoot no free throws and that's not saying anything again about him like that just might have been not what was going to happen that game that's the way it goes sometimes but that does tell you that Jalen was not getting touches in the paint uh or else he would have been go you know you'd have seen him at the free throw line more because it wasn't like Arkansas didn't shoot any free throws we, we shot a lot of free throws but they weren't from post ups uh which that's how Jalen does get to the free throw line a lot is getting the ball in the post making that move getting fouled that kind of thing and so, mm-hmm. and he was drug, he, even on offense, a lot of times he was drug out um, where he wasn't down there to get those offense boards. We did get 14 offense boards. We rebounded the ball. And this is, this is what I was going to. The, the real reason that we beat them comfortably like this was the fact that we destroyed them on the glass, which has not been the case against LSU. No, I they mean, killed LSU, us LSU, last time. Oh, they killed us on the, they got so many offensive rebounds the last time we played them. And that was not the case this time. Uh, we had 14 offensive boards. We cleaned up the defense glass. So, I mean, the, the defensing def- – or the rebounding differential is uh, LSU had 28 rebounds. Arkansas had 42. That's the game. Yeah. You go that's, why we, that's why you win by 12 instead of – That's right. Uh, win – shouldn't even win but and manage to squeeze out a one-point victory. Yep. That's it. And, you know, tell you what, man, Tony was a big part of that because, I mean, Tony did finish with – 
uh, with 10 rebounds, but I believe Tony, I'm going to look this up. I can tell you what it is. I believe that Tony was the leading offensive, re- which I think is pretty normal, you know, for him. That's how, it, that's how he does it. But if I, let me look here, the offensive rebounds. Yeah. So we had 14, they had six. Um, I don't know if I, I don't think, I don't know if they have the, the stats up for that yet but uh tony at 10 anyway he was he was the guy that was was grabbing those those offensive boards uh and he's just really good at that he's really good at just diving to the basket on on off he's always moving around on offense he's not a guy that has to be in one spot and when a shot goes up he's just good at his long fast uh strong he's good at getting in there and uh, that that made a huge difference man i mean if we're you're gonna rebound the ball like that him and him and him they him and Jalen together make each other they're such a nightmare on the glass and in finishing around the rim on those broken up plays uh and just keeping after you know the boards and stuff one if one of them's out it it's not like you are down by 50 percent you're down by more like 70 percent because when the focus can be on one guy it's so much easier not that i mean wade can also rebound and stuff, but Wade just doesn't have the same knack for finishing around the rim that Tony does. You know what I mean? Um, and, and neither does a Mude really, uh, Tony has a special gift of being able to get the ball and finish it on some awkward positions and stuff. Yeah. And um, I do like, I do like the Moody's, uh, let me just get that rebound and dunk it through though. Uh, qual style. That was nice. Um, actually I honestly, with the exception of Devo Davis, I didn't think anyone played poorly. Like, no. I, mean, I mean, I know Amude got in some foul trouble and, you know, struggled a little bit in the first half, but he still, he hit the shots when he was open and he got good looks. Um, like I said, Williams struggled for him, but still played well. Um, obviously, yeah, I mean, Williams was, was, Williams was, was huge. I'll tell, I you what, thought... I'll tell you what's nasty. Uh, the announcers talked about this a little bit, but Williams on the press is nasty. Because you know, obviously, obviously, likes is good against the press because he's so fast and he's so low to the ground that he's, he, you know, he, he, he can get the, he can, he gets the ball from the, from the, you know, you, you throw inbound it, he gets the ball from inbound to, to the half court mark so quick um, that it's hard to press. But if you do have the press set up, they they use Jalen Williams as a press breaker be, for exactly the reason that the announcers are talking about. He will just throw that ball right over the top of the, the press. Mm. Mm-hmm. and he, that, he was really pivotal in that i mean that it did the press just didn't work when they were doing that they, they didn't bound the ball the press the press would collapse on whoever had it they kick it over to Jalen, and Jalen just holds it and just finds the guy you know and just throws it right over the top of the defense and that's a luxury in a big guy because a lot of, dude most of the time you don't want your big guy in the backcourt with the ball when a team is pressing when you're trying to beat the 10 second count you don't want that arkansas does want that because Jalen's a guy you can trust well, and he doesn't panic, uh, and that is unique. I mean, I'm I panic <laughs> if I get the ball and people are that are faster and longer than me are pressing up on me. I am probably going to throw a bad pass, and and that's that's a lot of guys. Uh, but Jalen, especially, especially a lot of big guys, Jalen will just pivot and pivot, and he, he won't try to throw where they want him to where they have a chance at a steal or whatever. He generally will wait until someone comes to him or somebody's open and he'll find them. Um, what, as far as Devo goes, cause I did think that was interesting. I, I mean, we'll have to listen to what Musk says in his press conference, but. I mean, Devo I, didn't play well. Like he, it was real bad. The little tiny bit he was in there, but it was weird that he was like, you're done. Yeah. I mean, he played, he played pretty bad. He had, he had at least two turnovers in like two minutes. And one of them was that one pass was like, he passed it right to the LSU guy. It was like a ridiculous. It was, pass. A la- it was, a, it was, a, that was a, a seventh grade basketball, lazy pass. Like that was wild. But when Note got his second foul and went and sat down, I, I mean, and we were just absolutely lethargic. I mean, we couldn't, our offense looked terrible. We were turning the ball over and we weren't moving it very well. We were taking bad shots and and uh likes wasn't doing particularly well and it lo- just looked like we could really use another point guard that could dribble drive and uh i was surprised he didn't get back in there in that last like seven minutes of the first half i think, um, I think and then he didn't go in at all did he go in at all in the second half no i don't think so 
I don't think so. so I mean, I think well, I think I wonder, he played. I think he played like four or five minutes in the whole game. That was it. But I, I think, was wondering if he had a bad attitude or something. Like, because I don't it didn't it look like have, it. Didn't it look like it. that he played. Like he didn't play bad enough to warrant like that's mm-hmm. it. You're done. You know what I mean? He wasn't. He didn't like pull up from half court or something like that and shoot a ball. But he. I just wonder if he didn't when he got pulled out. If Musk said something to him and his attitude was bad or something, because it did seem strange that lights got so much. I, I, and... I didn't see it. I, I, they showed him on the bench. He didn't look like he was upset or had a bad attitude. Uh, I, they showed him a couple of times. He was cheering. I think Muss is this kind of guy. Um, Muss makes points in games. And, you know, if this was, you know, a different game, if this is a, you know, you lose, you're going, your season's over kind of game, maybe it's different. But I think – you know, he know we need Devo. We're gonna need Devo in the NCAA tournament. We need we need Devo tomorrow. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think I think that sometimes what Musk does, because I've seen him do this with multiple guys, when you're doing something that he's just like that that was so bad, which uh, the two turnovers were really bad, that he just is like you're just gonna be done this game, and you're gonna and that and you're gonna know when you go next game. Well, I definitely don't want to do that. I I I don't think. I, I think it resets with Devo. I don't expect Devo to play five minutes next game unless he does the same sort of thing. I just think that that's sort of how Musk does things sometimes, where he's just like, your night's over. Uh, don't do that next time you go in. You know, Don't mm-hmm. do that tomorrow when you go in. And my guess is that Devo will not do that tomorrow when he goes in. He'll be, he'll be more yeah, comfortable involved. Because like you said, I mean, not all all turnovers are the same and not mm-hmm. all even even bad plays are the same. Like, you know, it sometimes led, it led I mean, to it led to they both led to points. Well, he had two, and, he had two and, turnovers that led to points, and that's a that those are live ball, get a layup on the other end kind of turnovers, and that's not good. And they were completely unforced. They mm-hmm. were at least that one was definitely like it had nothing to do with LSU's defense. That was just unfocused, lazy, not taking care of the ball, which is probably the thing that would drive a coach the most crazy like mm-hmm. even if you pull up and like when no tape pulls up from you know 25 that's not, feet, yeah, that's not a live ball turnover if you take a bad shot and it hits the rim they're not getting a dunk on the other end like three you know 1.5 seconds later like if, well, you, they, if you just throw the ball did. into the into the passing lane and the guy just picks it off and goes and gets a dunk like that's just a that's just you didn't even get like must says this all the time i would rather so much rather you take a bad shot than to turn the ball over because like live ball turnovers are so, they they the percentage of the time that they result in points when you turn the ball over it live is super high like you don't if you take a bad shot and you miss that isn't that isn't result in points nearly at the clip that a live ball turnover does well as an example that shot i'm thinking of no tape pulled up from like 25 feet early i mean like with no passes and uh, just dribbled up and chucked it. It actually did brick super hard off the back of the rim. They it did re- the guy that rebounded threw it up and Note didn't get back and it didn't it just went to a layup. So it actually did turn into a basically mm-hmm. a live ball layup. But still, in the hierarchy of things that are going to make a coach hate you, while that's not like that's a zero. You know that's a, that's on there as far as like pull up a terrible shot. And then you're, even though you're, you pulled up from almost half court, you somehow are not back on defense. Cause I mean, probably cause you're felt it not going in and tried to get the rebound, but uh, that's one thing. But And it's a little bit of hero ball. It's a little selfish, but still like it's in the uh, you're trying to, you know, in your mind, when you pulled that up, it's like, if I make this, it'll pump up our team. It's like in the process of trying to do something good for the team. And it's, whereas- a, shot, and it's a shot. It's an attempt. Right. So the high end, like there is, there isn't, you took, it was a gamble and you crapped out, but at least there was some upside throwing a lazy non-focused pass. is just like from from the top, from the top to the slot, right in the passing lane, dude, that's a dunk every time. If a guy picks that up. Yeah. And, and it's not like in the, there's no upside. It's gotta be like the number one, uh, terrible, like a most annoying thing for a coach is, you're just not focused right now and you're throwing a lazy pass. Like it's, it's like, it's just unnecessary. Why are you doing that? It's yeah. not the same as playing hero ball and doing something that's probably a low percentage kind of silly shot, but at least you were trying to do something good. There's a, ch- there's a chance that it goes in, you know, I mean, well, I mean, yeah, they go in sometimes. I mean, yeah. they, 
you know, he's made them before. Yeah. So I, I think that's all it is with Devo. I love, I like Devo. I love, I think Devo is great and I think he's going to be fine, but I think that was just must be in like, don't throw that pass again. And, uh, and I don't think that Devo will throw that pass tomorrow. Uh, might, if I had to guess. So, uh, so uh, we, so we get to, to play Texas to, A&M. I, I, you know, in some ways, I mean, look, Texas A&M ain't a slouch. And so I'm not, I'm not saying on to the championship game or anything, but you know, if you just ask me, who would I rather play to get to the championship game, Auburn or Texas A&M? I would rather play Texas A&M. I know they're hot right now. Uh, I know Auburn is not great, uh, as, or at least down the stretch hasn't been great on the road. Apparently, that carries over to neutral site games too. Not a, like they're really good at home. Maybe not that great. Um, I do think that I think they cost themselves a number one spot. Oh, for sure, they're not a number one seed. There are two. But, but if, if they had won, if they had won the SEC tournament, they They'd be a probably one. would have been a number one seed. Yes, I mean they are. They not are not. That... They are. They are. They are not a number one seed. There's. There's no way they are number one seed right now. Um, the but I do think that uh, you know, it, I mean I know I did I, I I even looking at Auburn, um, I what Arkansas did this year is better than what Auburn did this year in this sense. Auburn was came out smoking hot and was smoking hot seventy five percent of the season had a number one overall ranking and has floundered and lost games at, at the end, at down the, down the stretch of the, you know, the last quarter of the season. I, I do know this. I would rather be clicking now, you know, so we got, we did that early. I would rather get that over with early because if I was an Auburn fan, I know that we're not, this is a Arkansas thing, but um, I would be concerned if I was an Auburn fan going into, into the NCAA tournament with how you've done on the road down the stretch and now uh, neutral site down the stretch, uh, I would be concerned about that. And well, they've, and they've gotten down in so many of their games. So like they, games. they had, they've had some amazing comebacks, but they've been down by like 15, 20 mm-hmm. points in multiple occasions. Now they were today. That. Like they were yeah, today. They, they always come back, but still that's just, not something you want to see your team do is like no. play terrible the first half. And so what, here's what you got to hope for. Like, you know, you can't take Texas name for granted. So what you want though, do you want to come out? You want to play really well against Texas A&M. And I do believe that if Arkansas plays well, Arkansas beats Texas A&M. I don't think Texas A&M is good enough to beat Arkansas. If Arkansas plays well, mm-hmm. that's, that's the thing, but I can see Kentucky and Tennessee, assuming they both win. They both have to win, uh, but I, if that does happen, I could see that just being a complete dogfight. There is a scenario that sets up where you're playing one of them, and and you're like, you know, it was tougher for you than it was for me because, uh, you know, uh, we did we we beat LSU. We didn't go to overtime or anything like that. That's the kind mm-hmm. of stuff you want to stay away from. You don't want low overtime, double overtime. You don't want none of that. You don't want people getting hurt. You want to come out play well um so we'll, we'll see what it is but i i uh i like our side of the bracket now better and honestly yeah, and honestly I mean, i'm i'm i going into the tournament uh, and i think i told this to you uh not on the on the show but uh i wasn't upset about the four seed because i think i think that tennessee and kentucky are better than auburn right now i would rather i would have rather seen i mean obviously they're not going to but I would have rather had to play Auburn to get to the championship game than Tennessee or Kentucky. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. I'd have to think about that, but um, like I said, at risk of counting chickens way before they're hatched, because who knows what will happen uh, with any of these teams and us, we could easily lose to, to Texas A&M um, at this point. I don't even, I want to well, win. Well, I just don't well, want to be anybody to be injured mostly. But what I was going to say is who would you rather face if you did make it to the SEC championship? Would you rather face Kentucky or Tennessee? Uh, if I like, which one do I think we, we is easier to beat? Sure. The, the game I want to see is Arkansas versus Kentucky because Arkansas versus Kentucky is the way the SEC basketball is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. So that's the game I want to see for from a fan perspective. I want to see that place half red, half blue. Uh, that's the game I want to see. Uh, I think I think it's easier for us to beat Tennessee. 
Yeah, I'm not sure if I because I, uh, I think that, I think that we're two and zero against Tennessee if Tony's not hurt. Well, that's what I was going to say. I, I actually, from a personal, like I said, I agree with you that the Kentucky Arkansas rivalry, like in the SEC championship, that feels like the '90s again. That would be cool. I personally this year rather see uh, Tennessee again because I kind of feel like. Uh, yeah, you feel like we have to, we got, if Tony is healthy, we're better than you. We should have beat them both times and we should have beat them and LSU three times. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, or we could. So, um, and I, mean, I tell you what, I, I don't think Arkansas is making any friends in the SEC like that, that at the end there where, no. where they dunked it and then stole it. Like, uh, I, th- I think between Auburn and what happened at the end of that game and then Tennessee, uh, and I kind of, I kind of think that Arkansas oh. still, and I, I actually like this. I'm not a fan of doing that. I think that that's like not great. I wish we Probably didn't should have run, run, run the clock out. Just yeah, that's how I. If I was a coach, I would be very much telling guys not to do that. However, I think the the reason for it, if I'm 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 guessing here, but I think this is probably right. I don't mind the reason for it, even though I'd wish you didn't do it. I think the reason for it is that through this entire run, once Arkansas figured it out, I think that Arkansas still feels a little bit disrespected. And uh, I think that's reflected in the rating. Uh, that I don't think they've ever felt like they were ranked where they should have been ranked. Uh, I still don't think Arkansas is ranked where they should be ranked. And I think that, I think that they feel that way. I think that uh, even when you saw some of the, the bracket projections come out, I, th- I thought they were low. Uh, not, you know, not like, like before going into the Tennessee game, you know, I, most brackets had Arkansas as a six seed. That was insane to me. Mm-hmm. And with Tennessee had, as a three. Is that with Tennessee as a three? That was nuts. Like it was nuts to me. So I think, I think that there is, but I like it because I think Arkansas does better when they have a chip on their shoulder. I think they do better when they feel um, disrespected. And I would tell you this, the Texas A&M game, uh, Arkansas needs to feel like that they can improve their seeding, which of course they can. So they need to win that game. Say, Hey, we need to get to that championship game. Like we, we can, we can keep improving our seeding, but you're going to be playing a Texas A&M team that is still playing for more than you, because you might be trying to play for respect and you might be trying to get off the four line or whatever it is you're trying to do. They're trying to get into the tournament. Now they might've done it today, but mm-hmm. it's still, they're still going to be like on the bubble. Like with, like, I'm sure when Joe Lenari is going to come out tonight and say, Texas A&M is first four out or last four in. Or, and that is, all that means is maybe. Either one of those mm-hmm. things just means maybe. I mean, he's not the one deciding. I guarantee you, okay, I guarantee you if Texas A&M gets to the SEC championship game, they are going to the tournament. They don't have to win it. They beat Arkansas tomorrow. They are going. It's a lot to play for. Mm-hmm. And you got to have to be ready for their best. Their, their, that's their season. Their season is on the line tomorrow. Ours is not. You do have to overcome that motivation, which is a big task. Yeah. No, I, I agree with all that for sure. Um, it's going to be a fun weekend. I love it. I love the, these tournaments where you have games every day. It's... Yeah, dude. March Madness is is uh, is here. It's great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, all right, man. Let's leave it right there. Uh, I'm going to go uh, watch uh, some more games. And, uh, and just figure out who's going to be on the other side of the bracket. But uh, I'm excited, and I guess we'll, we'll be back tomorrow uh, breaking down what happens when Arkansas faces Texas A&M to see who goes to the SEC championship game. Let's do it. Awesome. Right. See you, man. See you, man.